Okay, so what do we need to do in terms of projectors? We need to be able to split uh, motion into horizontal vertical components of V, U, A, S, and T. We need to be able to have the, the horizontal and vertical velocities, final and initial, accelerations, final and initial, if we have them, it's always going to be constant, uh, displacements and times. Out of one, two, three, four, five of those, which one is the constant between the two? Which one is going to be the same? Now, I know you get crazy of motion written down. Uh, turn to the other side of your board and write down a symbol, either V, U, A, S, or T, and tell me which one is going to be the same for both horizontal and vertical. Only one of them can be the same for both horizontal and vertical. Think of a ball in the air. Think of anything that's flying through the air. Will the velocities always be the same, both horizontal and vertical? Will the accelerations be the same, both horizontal and vertical? Will the time be the same, both horizontal and vertical? Show me your boats. Which one do you think has the same, both horizontal and vertical? Show me what you think. Right, struggling here. Boats down. Right, another more. Let's think about it. Let's think about it. Okay. The ball starts off on the table. I throw it up, and it comes back down and hits the table again. The, the velocities will be different. Horizontally, it could have greater or lesser velocity. Vertically, acceleration will be different. Acceleration, you've accelerated due to gravity. It could have zero acceleration in the horizontal direction. Displacement will most certainly be different because it's had a completely different displacement horizontally that it has vertically. The only one left is, of course, time. Time must be the same for both horizontal and vertical motion. It must start at the same time. It must finish at the same time. You can't say horizontally. Horizontally, it's still moving at 10 meters per second, but vertically, it's not moving at all. Well, you can say vertically it was zero, but overall, the time must be the same, both horizontally and vertically. It can't just suddenly stop in one of the directions. Okay? The, the, the motion of the object, the time is the same, both horizontally and vertically. Right, now thing here is understand the assumptions made during projectile motion. We'll look at these assumptions as well. You've gone far too many times, David. Stop doing it. Okay, right, let's look at some of these assumptions. Uh, and look at um, uh, projectile motion. Okay, so we've got a projectile. Let's say it's projectile on a flat plane like this. It's a ball of some sort. And it goes up like this and down on this, and it finishes at point here, okay? We, first thing we can do, we can split this into both horizontal and vertical components. If I split it up into the vertical component only, we could draw the motion of the object vertically only. Vertically is up and down away. So let's say we take a vertical motion here at the side, the ball goes up, and then comes back down again. What happens at the top here? What happens at the top of the motion of this ball with Carson? For this ball, just talking about the vertical direction only, up and down the way only, what happens at the top? Well, stay still, so if it stays still, what can you say its vertical motion is? Zero. zero. So at the top here, the motion equals zero. At the top, the motion can equal to zero. Good. Okay, that's vertical only. This is vertical. Let's look at horizontally. Horizontally, the object starts here and goes up and back down again and finishes here. What can you tell me about the motion horizontally? Fraser. Or horizontally only. We're not talking about vertically, we're not talking about up and down the way, we're only talking about left and right. What can you tell me? What have I just drawn on the board? What else have I just drawn? Constant, yeah, it's a straight line. If you were to consider only the horizontal motion of this ball, it would start at the starting point and move forward and stop at the finishing point. There's no change, there's no zero, there's no maximum, it's constant all the way along. Uh, so it was all the way along. Okay? Zero. Well it's not zero, it's constant. It doesn't reach a zero point. So this is horizontally. And if I were to look at the ball, so it the components. This would be uh, its vertical velocity, this would be its horizontal velocity. Notice VV and VH. Okay, you'd also have UV, UH, you'd also have SV, SH, 
A B A H T A T V T H. You'd have to solve it for all those. Okay, so that's basically how we're going to look at it. Think about it in two separate ways, horizontally and vertically. Carson's already told us that at the top here, the vertical velocity will reach zero. So at this point here, VB equals zero. Now that could be a U or a V, depending on what you want to do, but the velocity at the top of the curve in the vertical direction equals zero. This is what this thing on the left hand side here, this is what this is saying here. Okay? VB, motion is zero at the top of the vertical plane. Right? So if this changes, go starts off, up, stop and down again, what can you tell about the horizontal direction? What happens to the motion in the horizontal direction? Adam, can you tell me about this? But I think we've already pretty much covered it. What do you think that is? It's the same, it's constant. Okay, so if VB equals zero at the top, then VH equals constant. Why? Or if VH is constant, what else can you tell me? What can you tell me about the acceleration of the object in the horizontal direction, Ross? <laughs> well, kind of. Constant, yes. We can actually give it a number. David. One. one. So the acceleration will be one meters per second squared. Always. <laughs> I cannot work that one. Wait, okay, think about this a bit more. Your velocity in the horizontal direction is constant, does not go up, does not go down, stays the same, it's a straight line. We looked at acceleration time graphs compared to velocity time graphs last day. Uh, velocity is constant, so Robert, what do you tell me acceleration in the horizontal direction if the velocity is constant, not changing? Does the object accelerate in the horizontal direction? No, does not speed up, does not slow down, it stays the same. It, it has no acceleration. So what value can we give the acceleration in the horizontal direction, Anna? Zero, yes, good. A, H equals zero. There's another assumption. Not normally there's no acceleration in the horizontal direction. So A, H can also usually, usually be considered zero. Okay? Right. Acceleration in the vertical direction. Acceleration in the vertical direction. That's an easy one. It has to be easy. It's the one that you should know like that. An object, any object that experiences free fall, any object that falls, any object that is going towards the centre of the earth under its own steam, any object you drop, all has the same acceleration. Everything does. Before you tell me the number, what causes that acceleration? What causes it? Uh, 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 gee, shush! Dylan? Gravity. Gravity. Is gravity a force? No. No? Gravity is not a force. Gravity is a gravitational constant. It's constant for this planet. Every planet has a different gravitational constant. What force does gravity cause? Um, and what force does gravity cause? Weight. Weight. Okay, not to be confused with mass. Weight is measured in what, Fraser? Newtons. Not to be confused with kilograms, which is what normally you would say, I'm going to weigh myself and you get kilograms or you get stones or whatever, pounds. Weight is newtons. It's a force by which you get pushed down towards the centre of the earth. Mass is how much stuff you have in your body. That is kilograms. So, gravitational constant for earth G for Earth is what number? What is G for Earth? David? 9.8. 9.8 what? We need to know the units now. You can't just get away with saying 9.8. You need to know the units. Okay. Meters per second per second? Kind of. Well, in fact, no. G is not meters per second per second. G is not... Um, that's the acceleration unit you're giving me. I want gravitational constant, you know. It's slightly different. Watch, can you hear it? Newtons per kilogram. Newtons per kilogram. Think about this is a quick aside. Just a quick aside. Uh, w equals mg. Now this is this is how I remember I told you last day about how we use the formula to help us. Okay? 
If I wanted to get the definition of gravity, what would I do, Andrew? What would the first thing I would do if I wanted to get the definition of gravity? Be arranged for what? G. What would be? And what's the next step if I want to get the definition of gravity? Anna, what do I do next? Actual definition of it. Like in words. Weight per unit mass. Okay, weight per unit mass. So if I wanted to get the units of gravity, so this is weight per unit mass. So weight, and I would say that is per, and I would say unit mass. Now, if I want the actual units for gravity, for gravitational constant, I could replace the weight by n and unit mass by kilograms, and I would have newtons per kilogram. That is the units for, for, gravitation, for gra gravitational constant. So g is equal to, on Earth, 9.8 newtons uh, kg to 91. That is what it is on Earth, 9.8 newtons per kilogram. And if you ever forget the units for anything, just read the format to help you get the unit. Okay? That's a common multiple choice question. What's the units for, gra for gravitational constant? And you get all these newtons per all, rubbish. And then you get the multiple choice and you have to put the right one. Okay, so G is 9.8 newtons per kilogram. Now let's go back to this. So if G is 9.8 newtons per kilogram, that means for, for every kilogram you're forced down with one newton. Alright? So Take a stab in the back, what's acceleration in the vertical direction due to gravity? Stop. What's the acceleration? What's the acceleration due to gravity then? If the gravitational constant is 9.8, what's the acceleration due to gravity? 9.8. Acceleration due to gravity is 9.8. Now, this is where people get confused. Acceleration. Scalar or vector? Scalar or vector? James. <coughs> Said James. Which means wrong answer. Give him another chance. 50 50. Vector. Vector, yeah. It took you a minute there. Yes, you had two options. You picked the wrong one, so then you struggled with it. Okay, so acceleration is a vector. We must have what for the vector? I've got 9.8. Excellent. Yeah, I need something else, Adam. Direction. What direction is acceleration due to gravity, Alison? Down. down. Always down. Never forget that. It's always down. That is where people end up causing problems. Having problems. Acceleration is always down the way. Okay? So the object in this example starts by going up. So immediately, it's going to have an acceleration which opposes its motion. That's why it slows down and gets to zero at the top. So it starts off here. It slows down as it gets to here, at zero at this point here, and then it speeds up as it comes down again. That's because acceleration is down the way. Okay? Yeah. Is that a penny drop moment? No, it's okay. Makes sense, yes. Acceleration is always down the way. That's just why we have a sign convention. This is why we set our point of reference, and particularly for projectile questions. Because we're going to have to start dealing with negatives here. Negative motion. In the vertical direction, the velocity can be negative. Okay, so these are the assumptions you're going to have to make. Um, and one last thing, we said about time. Time in the vertical direction will equal time in the horizontal direction. These are all your assumptions. Take your heading, projectiles, write this down, cover it down.